Good morning. This is Artie, the Vintage Stitcher. Today is a Sunday. Yay, Sundays. <laughs> I love Sundays. Um, I usually spend the whole day crafting, which is great. <gasps> crafting and videoing for everyone. So I am so happy that you are here with me today. All right. Um, today's video is a request I've had many, 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 many times. And it's something that I have covered in past videos, but kind of just in passing. So I really want to go over it in, in detail with you. Um, it is how to close up the back of your pillows when you're making your pillows, okay? Um, I've gone over how to do the split back and how we use a half inch seam so that we have this little fold and stuff like that. Um, but a lot of you have stated that you're not getting the neatness out of your stitch that you would like to get and then um what you do to cover it up on the back so i'm using this little pillow oops this little pillow that we finished um a couple weeks ago we put some pom-pom trim on it and um finished it up i did the split back so i am going to move the camera down today i'm going to move the camera down here in just one second i'm going to show you how to close this up with the ladder stitch okay it's super easy so, and once you learn and practice it you will never go back to any other stitch it will just become um a habit it, this is how you will close everything because it will just become the stitch that you will always use and i'm going to show you how i'm going to cover up that little seam in the back with some decorative um stuff so um, before I move the camera down, if you're loving the tutorials that I'm putting out and loving the videos that I'm doing with all the different crafts and everything, please hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, leave me a comment, leave me a thumbs up, all that sort, sort of thing. It really helps the channel to grow and it really helps me be able to stay home and craft with you every single day. And that is the goal is to be able to craft every single day. And I absolutely love it. So. Let's get started. All right, so I'm moving this camera down. <clears throat> um, and hopefully we'll be able to see this clearly. I'm going to try and get this as close to the, the camera as I can so that you can see this. I'm going to be doing this in a contrasting thread, okay? So when you sewed your backing you prepped your backing we used a half inch seam allowance and we pr we pressed that seam allowance open so that gives you like a half inch on both sides so you're not really dealing with like a really scant little piece of fabric to close up it also gives you that pressed seam right there to be able to grab that seam, okay? So this gives you a guideline. Now this is a fairly large opening, I kind of misjudged that. Um, so you have your needle and thread, all right? You can start on one other end or the other, depends on if you're right-handed or left-handed, it, it doesn't make any difference. Um, I always start it and then I flip it around. So what you want to do is you never want to start stitching like here, okay? See how you have these kind of couple of these loose threads here from turning it and stuffing it and stuff like that. You want to start stitching back here so that we can pull those in and make those disappear. All right. So what I'm going to do is I am going to bring my needle up either side. Doesn't matter. I don't know if you could see my needle coming through. back here and I'm going to bury that knot in there okay all right so now I have to kind of turn this because this is I'm a right-handed stitcher so what you're going to do is you're going to you're going to take a little piece of fabric like this okay and you're going to pull that. Okay, hopefully. I, I got to get my camera angle right here. You're going to pull that. And then you're going to go straight across. And you're going to scoop straight across a little piece of fabric like this. 
Okay, and you're gonna pull that. And I'm gonna do a couple stitches. And you'll see, once we get past this little spot where there's all these threads, you're gonna be able to see it better. So I'm coming over, then I'm coming back straight across. And scooping. Then you come back over here. And scoop, okay? And then you're gonna come back over here and scoop back over here. And you're just going to scoop little pieces right on that pressed edge, okay? That is the seam. So can you see why it, they call it the ladder stitch? It kind of looks like a ladder, okay? So you just continue to go back and forth straight back and forth, creating your ladder. Sorry, my fingers are in the way. Back and forth. And you want to use a fairly strong thread because you're going to be giving this a tug. Okay, back and forth. See where I'm going? See how that's... Back and forth. All right, so now you've gotten this kind of down. And you could do, you can do about halfway, a third of the way. I kind of break it up. Um, when my thread starts getting a little short, then I start pulling it. Now, this is where the magic happens. I'm going to kind of turn this. When you give this a pull, it is going to cl close that seam right up for you, okay? It's going to close that right up nice and neat for you. You still got those little bumps there, but we're going to cover that up. Okay. And then you continue on. So I'm stitch back. I'm going to have to kind of put this down. I'm holding it up in the air and stitching at the same time. So back. Let's see what I'm doing. And then you just keep coming back. Let's lose my thread here. And then you just keep doing that. All right. So then, when you give this a pull, and you just kind of adjust it, you're going to give it a pull. It's going to close that seam up, and you're not going to be able to see threads. See how that does it? It almost is like magic. So that's what you're going to have. You're going to have a nice, neat closure, okay? So we're going to finish this up back and forth and you do this right to the very end. Now I do this with my back closures. I do this with my top and bottom closures. Um, if you go back to, um, I have a video that I did with a basic top or bottom closure with the tab where you kind of keep that um, keep that extra little tab. Okay, so now I'm going to pull this. Watch. Give it a pull. Just a gentle pull. And I just pulled my pom-poms off. Okay. Just a gentle pull. Gentle pull. And then you just continue on to the end. And then you just keep giving that 
a nice little tug, it's going to close that up for you. Okay, see where that's going? And then you just knot this off, okay? All right. Let's knot that off. And bury that thread. Okay. Okay. Hang on one second. And there you have your closer. Now... I have stuffing sticking out of it and stuff like that. So it's not a perfect little closure, but it works really nice. Okay. And let, just remember, I'm holding this up in the air. I'm doing this up in the air in front of the camera. Okay. It's, <laughs> I got to get a better setup for some of this stuff. Now, a lot of people are like, all right, what do you cover the back up with? Now, there's many things you can cover your back up with. Um, I've always showed you like the little heart. You can you could put a little heart or a little uh, wool piece over it or a little piece of matching fabric. I've got this stuff out for contrast um, purposes, but you can even take like a gross grain ribbon. And I've done this where I've just stitched gross grain ribbon on and covered that seam up. And what I do is at the beginning and the end, I just kind of give it a little fold so that there's no frayed ends. I start it, you know, start it at the beginning here, and I just tack it in place all the way past. And then I, all the way down, I fold the little end at this top, and then I stitch it back down. So I do this one a lot. I do this one. This one is one that I do a lot. I have um, lots of this gross grain ribbon. You can get this all over the place or you can get a fancier ribbon and you can cover it up just enough to cover up that seam. Okay. Or you can come in with your fancy Rick Racks. Now this does not match at all, um, but you could do the same thing. You can bring in a piece of Rick Rack, nice wide piece of Rick Rack, tack that over it. Okay. So the other thing you can do is, and I've done this a couple of times, is I've taken and I have just done like a cluster of buttons on these. And in this case, I don't sit and sew them on. Handy dandy tacky glue. All right. I use tacky glue and I just put a line over the seam and I put my buttons down and I put all sorts of buttons. And that's what I'm going to do today. All right. This is where I'm kind of at. So I just kind of put a tacky glue. This dries clear. No worries. And this finish is just for me. No worries at all. Okay. So I put my line of tacky glue and then I just kind of start with say my largest button. And you can do this however you like. All right. Um, so I'm just kind of put lining them up, lining them up. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some more so that they're not just lined up. I wanted to make, make them look kind of like a cluster. So I'm going to add some over the top of them. All right. Over some of these. Edges. So if you have like some really cute antique buttons, this is super, this is a super cute idea. All right. You just kind of have to be careful on these curved edges. <laughs> they kind of fall off. They, they slide around a little bit. So you have to put it in a position then to dry where it's not going to, um, they're not going to slide off. But I just kind of do a cute little cluster of buttons. I love buttons. I am a huge button collector. Um, I go to antique stores and I find them. I'm at Hobby Lobby all the time. Cute little. I love old ones. I love new ones. I love all sorts of buttons. So now I'm just going to leave that 
I like that. See, I like that little cluster of buttons on the back. I think it kind of gives it a cute little vintagey look. So, so get creative with covering up your seam on the back, okay? It doesn't have to just be the basic heart. It can be. And then you can add buttons to it. You can add a little embroidery to it. You can make a little label for it. Um, same thing with your ribbon. You can lay your ribbon down first and then add buttons to your ribbon and do that. Um, same thing with your rickrack. You can add a rickrack. Get creative with what you have in your stash of what you want to cover your backup. Everybody is, a lot of people have been asking me, okay, what do you cover it up? I'm bored with a heart. I'm bored with a star. I'm bored with a, you know, get creative. If you really want it to be matchy matchy, you could take another piece of this and make like a little trim out of it where you fold the edges in like a, kind of like a bias tape and then sew that down over it and then it'll all be very matchy matchy. But I like to use my back, my split backs as another little design element and I am probably going to add a little bow I'm going to take this little gross green ribbon and I'm going to little, add a little bow back here too with maybe and this is a good place to like put your charm your 2022 charm or your initials or something that is meaningful to you I mean there's all sorts of things that you can do to cover up that seam to make it look extra special and nobody nobody would be the wiser that there is a seam there. All right. So I hope you learned something today. Um, hopefully me being up in the air wasn't too joggling for you. If you have any questions about any of this, please feel free to email me. I am always happy to answer any questions about my videos. If you email me or catch me on Instagram, I'm not on Instagram very much. But if you email me at the Vintage Stitcher Stash, I'm always happy to answer any questions that you may have regarding the videos or if there's something that I missed or overlooked. I'm always happy to answer those questions for you. So hope you learned something today. When you're out in the world, please be kind, spread love, and find peace.